Welcome to Game Industry Reviews. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Today we shall explore the crack ship that Sapphire Heartsong enjoys ever so much. That's not a word! No! <laughs> uh, good. You know what? I'm just going to let Sweetie Bot deal with that one. Yes? <laughs> it's a good thing that you don't have to censor that one, Norman. <laughs> Joining us is Sapphire, obviously. I just want to eat my sandwich. Uh, too late. You got sandwich. <laughs> uh, and also joining us today is James Cork. Oh yeah, I guess I'm here now. Don't get used to this. This might just be a regular thing. I'm just here for the food. <laughs> yeah. My uh, food. <laughs> yeah. Now give me some. No way. No, I want to eat some. You can you... braid my hair and then you can eat. If you don't give me food, I will eat you later. Oh wow. Oh my. Uh, you know, folks at home, I don't script this. This is all non-scripted, and I got no idea how this goes down like this, so bear with me. Norman Sanso, the George Lucas of podcasters, he doesn't <laughs> use a script. <laughs> well, obviously, we haven't since day one. What? Uh, you, you're dissing George Lucas and putting the pressure on Norman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome, folks, as to Norman Has a Bad Day. Norman has a bad day. He let the Spanish Inquisition take over his podcast. Oh, yes, it's almost, Norman's almost, having a bad day. I'm having a bad day. It's almost as bad a day as uh, Starlight and Trixie are having. Oh, yeah. Aha, back on topic. <laughs> Yay! We can, always, uh, we can always expect greatness from Silver. But anywho, to, on, today's, <laughs> <laughs> anywho, on today's review, we are going to talk about My Little Pony Season 7, Episode 17, To Change a Changeling. In this episode, Starlight Grimmer and the great and powerful Trixie tries to get Torek's brother, Farex, to accept the Changeling's new way of sharing love. Will they succeed? Will they fail? Find out soon. On My Little Pony Z. I think I have an issue with your wording of it. It almost sounded like a clickbait article. <laughs> Uh, and a, ch- a changeling <coughs> reforming this episode of My Little Pony more likely than you think. <laughs> Click here to find out more. Honestly, just about anything involving Starlight seems to be clickbait these days. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But... Become f- princess of friend, f- friend with the princess of friendship after trying to destroy the world five times? It's more likely than you think. <laughs> Click here to find out more. Five times. Five times. Yeah, for uh, one for each alternate universe created. Oh, wow. Wouldn't that be more than five? I have no idea. It's been ages since I watched that finale. Uh, but anywho. Six. Well. Oh, six in all, I believe. Uh, good grief. But anywho. Oh, we are so forgiven in this fandom. We gave her a pass. She's a, she's a cinnamon band now. Everybody eat the starlight. Uh, let's get into first impressions. Anyway. Yes. Silver, what are your thoughts, man? Huh? Well, this one was thoroughly enjoyable for me. Not only do we get to see the Changeling Kingdom post-Chrysalis, not only do we get some good humor, I love Pharynx's designs, plural. I love his attitude. I love how Starlight and Trixie are really the worst possible ponies you could put to this job. (laughs) This is a friendship lesson conducted by two ponies who really aren't that great at doing such things. And so that makes it more enjoyable. We've had a lot of changes to status quo in this show. Twilight getting wings, Crystal Empire, New Castle, Flurry Heart, and the new Changelings. And I maintain that a lot of these, no matter how much they set the fandom ablaze initially, time and exposure will get people acclimated and maybe even accepting. So seeing the, the new Changelings being fun and silly and a little bit adorable uh, was a great help. Also, we got to witness uh, Trixie and Starlight in the sack. Oh, my. Oh, <laughs> my. Hey. hey. Um, yeah. oh, I ship it. W.K. there, sir. <laughs> but anywho, Seppi, what about you? My point still stands. I I also agree with, uh, I forget how to pronounce his name. <laughs> Silver? No. <laughs> Not you, you evil devil. Me, normal. Pharynx? Yes, that oh, guy. Pharynx. Pharynx. All right. For some reason, I keep calling him Pharynx. Anyways. Uh, I also enjoy his design. I don't know. I enjoy his character. He's a badass little changeling who refuses to change the says, quote, despite everything happening around him. 
I don't know. He reminds me of somebody in my family who would think that everybody is a friggin' pansy. And I love it. <laughs> I mean, I also like his reasoning behind staying the same. I just love this character. That's all I can really say about the episode. I only watched it once in my life. And James, what about you, man? This episode is a lot of fun. It's it's adorable in the best way possible. The changelings are just... They are so likable in their current iteration. Not that they weren't likable before, but they are almost sh scene stealers. In that I could spend an entire episode just watching that group hug <laughs> group. What is it? What is it called? The where they all get the feelings forum. Yeah. <laughs> I could watch an entire episode just with the feelings. The feelings forum. Each one of them bickering at each other. It's like that's that's great. Um, the action and the the action towards the end of the of the episode is a bit stale, a bit like talk, eh, not that interesting. But the changelings and the dynamic between Thorax, his brother Pharynx, and uh, Trixie and and Starlight it was great. It was great. This episode is top tier of the season. It was All a right. lot of fun. All right, yeah. right. And as for me, this episode was fun. I do highly enjoy this episode. Uh, Rewatching it again was a lot of fun. I get to see the new changeling and their location and the Badlands are not that bad anymore, which is pretty cool. And also, what yeah, else? They're the mildly annoying lands. Yeah, <laughs> just because of the more wolf. They are the, uh, the G1 lands. <laughs> yes. But, and also, I, I don't know, this episode was a lot of fun. I do like the dynamic between Torex and Ferrag. Uh, F F Pharynx? Pharynx. 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 It's okay. the, it's it's the okay. part of your... The part of, it it's the part of your throat that divides the tube between the lungs and the stomach. Huh. Pharynx. Pharynx. All right, then. Uh, the more you know. So, yeah, I, I do like those two dynamics. The quote-unquote brother dynamic. Because if you think about it, everybody in the Changeling Hive is quote-unquote family. But yes. Uh, we Thorex. are family. Damn Kill me. Damn. I, just got I got all my grub mates in me. <laughs> Kill me. Uh, but anywho, if you guys at home have not watched this yet, uh, pause here and go watch it. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the episode and let's get right into it. So we start off the episode with Starlight and Trixie teleporting to the quote-unquote Badlands. And Trixie commenting like, oh, after how many times we got here now? And Starlight said that, hey, at least we got uh, closer to the Badlands. Before this, we were right there, just a few feet away. Yay. How Starlight says they got they, they got the right uh, straight away. And Trixie goes, well, it's not exactly straight. <laughs> well, if you... Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> I, I... You men with your dirty minds. What oh. dirty minds? It's not... <laughs> I didn't say it. Trixie did. Hey, interpretation. So if you want dirty minds, I, I'm looking at that tree they're passing, which looks like it's got several hands. Look at grasp. I'm getting a terrible evil dead vibe off that thing. Oh, God, Bert, no. kill the fire. It's the angry tree from Poltergeist. <laughs> oh, boys. Well, anywho, um, the reason why they're in the Changeling Empire. Is it called the Changeling Empire? Uh, Kingdom now. Okay, Kingdom. Kingdom. Uh, the reason why they're in the Changeling Kingdom is because Torex has been sending uh, letters to Twilight talking about the Changeling Hive, how it improve and whatnot. But in those letters, uh, he also mentioned that he's under a lot of stress and is asking for advice. Starlight and Trixie goes there to surprise Torex and see if they could help with anything they could. Well, they could. And before they quote-unquote approach the location, a rogue changeling appears and, well, shipping occurs. A rogue changeling has appeared. It wants to battle. <laughs> it used burlap sack. It's super effective. <laughs> All the fanboys and fangirls fate. <laughs> uh, well, at least they get shipped to Torex. Yes, direct shipping. <laughs> yep. Yeah. No, Pasco. <laughs> so, anywho, while in the sack. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Tommy. 
Yeah. <laughs> just wait, folks. We're gonna be saying this a lot. Nah, yeah. it's gonna be ending soon. Oh well, in the sec. Somebody send help. <laughs> well, in the sec. Yes. Trixie. Yes, send Starlin and Trixie some wine. <laughs> Trixie. Trixie is send trying. Send help. <laughs> Trixie's trying to do a teleportation spell but fails and the reason why <clears throat> and Starlight keeps saying you know that's not how it works right and the method that Trixie's doing is teleportation spell go and yeah it, it doesn't work that way Trixie it's a it's adorable how she thinks she can be <laughs> helpful oh <laughs> uh, yes <clears throat> And the way they and the way they just start sort of snipping at each other. This, this is why these two are so much fun in this uh, episode. And as a pair, in a way, they they show their worst, but they complement each other so well. It actually becomes more enjoyable. The main six are, are at this point are so such balanced friends that they can tackle a situation. And aside from some banter, they can handle the the issue. Oh, yeah. But these two, you get a sense that they are wholly. Uh, unqualified for what they're facing at the moment. Oh, yeah. Even with Starlight's magic. And if you really think about it, like, the main five for them is what? Starlight, Trixie, Discord, Torex. Just four, right? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Oh, the main four you then. throw Mod Pie in. And you can also throw... Um, uh, Sunburst. Oh, <laughs> Sunburst. Yeah. Sunburst. Yeah, okay. We, we have a main six, a second group of main six. Like, those... Dynamic there, kind of is okay, but there's a lot of infighting, if you know what I mean. Like, nothing is pure harmony, like how the main sick has it. Think about how, and I'm not going to make reference to MLP, think about the Avengers in the first Avengers movie. They were bickering at each other during the first half of the film, and in they, until they all knock her, heads together and decided to save the world. Hell, even the main six back in season one, they were not getting along all the time. Rainbow Dash and AJ were always at each other's throats. Dash didn't even want to see Pinkie Pie on occasions. Rarity thought was above everyone else. Twilight was still rather recluse, not really socializing all that much. The dynamic changes. Um, we are just seeing this now because it might be more apparent. Uh, because now the main six work like a cohesive unit and these guys are dysfunctional central but that's the thing we love because we already have a perfect well oil machine the imperfectness for this one makes it much more entertaining and different from what we have like we have been through seven seasons of uh, the main six now if we are given another batch of ponies to play around with including discord like hilarity will ensue but anywho let's get back on track well, he has on track. Norman wants to have some oils on hand for this while they're in yep. the sack. Uh, bow wow. Anywho, Ferex dumps. <laughs> <laughs> Ferex. Uh, Ferex oh, dumps everybody out the sack and presents them to Torex. And Torex says, Hey guys, uh, welcome to the Changeling Kingdom. What are you doing here? And sorry about Ferex. He is a bit rough around the edges. Ferex hears that and stomps that's off. An understatement. Yeah, that's what you say. So is a buzz saw, but you, you know, <laughs> don't touch. <laughs> yes. He actually kind of looks like a buzz saw. Have you seen his hair? Oh, boy. Yeah. Well, oh, his frills. I, I love what he's done with his, with his dorsal fins. <laughs> uh, so, anywho, um, Torex here just welcomes Starlight and Trixie and also explains Ferex attitude. He doesn't want to change and he doesn't like the change. He thinks that everybody has been turned pansies and can't defend themselves, which is true. So Firex represents all those season one and two brony purists <laughs> that think everything sucks after season three. Probably? It seems that way. I don't like change! I don't like change! Everything has to stay the same! Uh, Actually, I'll, I'll, I want to talk about this a little bit more when we get to the feelings forum. All right, all right, oh, right. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. But I, of the episode. But Although, I, should, we, should we right now... Safi, would you like to comment on your incestuous uh, <laughs> shipping between uh, pharynx and thorax? I hate you. Yeah, I remember that. Well said. <laughs> I remember that from last week. Oh, the Patreon people had a surprise hey. with that one. Oh. <laughs> Hey! 
Yes, uh, Safi mixed the names of our two uh, cha- f- uh, central changelings here. Hey! <laughs> and so she gave rise to a new incestuous shipping, which I never knew she was into, but hey, I'm not hey. one to judge. <laughs> so is it Thorinx or, fa- uh, or Farax? Farax, uh, I think. Farax. Yeah. Farax. <laughs> I hate you people. <laughs> yeah. There is no judgment here, you incestuous shipping weirdo. <laughs> Oh, I'll, I'll try to save you, Seppi. So, anywho. <laughs> oh, so, anywho. Torexia brings our ponies along to the new Changeling Kingdom and introduces them to the Changeling activity. This totally reminds me of Season 1, Appaloosa. Not quite as rapid fire with the jokes. I- I'll say it right now the two Changelings doing a dance is freaking adorable. I know. But still, it, it was really fun to see them do the whole uh, quote-unquote Appaloosa introduction thing. And like you mentioned before, Silva, it's not um, rapid fire with how the jokes are, but it was there a bit. Yeah. Until we are introduced to one of the ponies who got like paint on all over. And uh, uh, You mean one of the, the changelings? Yes, what did I say? You said ponies. Ah, sorry, my bad. Um, changelings, yes. Until one of the changelings <clears throat> came in and complained that f- Pharynx, or uh, yeah, Pharynx has been painting the changelings black because they're not intimidating enough. Now, I will apologize to the audience because people who viewed this episode had to watch a changeling in blackface. Oh God! I realize how offensive. <laughs> <that is>. <laughs> Silver, no. <laughs> it. It's quite literal. Yeah, true. <laughs> there is black paint on this poor changeling's face. Oh, uh, well. Uh, but anywho, Torexia just explains the situation that Pharynx here has been a bit troublesome. And Starlight here has the bright idea of trying to change Pharynx and thinking that it might work. So they head off to try and change Pharynx. They find Pharynx battling a vine and saying that it's a tripping hazard and it's also stupid ponies or intruders might come in and hide in there and stuff. And Starlight and Trixie explains about their backstory. I also love how Starlight introduces, I know we got off to a bad start. I threw you in a sack. (laughs) I thought it was great. (laughs) Thorax is secret ship. Uh, No, Pharynx confirmed a secret ship. You boy, like, Ferrick's attitude here is fun. He is the male of the show, like the typical male, quote unquote, bully and whatnot. Because he, I can so, I can totally see him do the joke of why are you hitting yourself, why are you hitting yourself, foreshadowing. Well, he doesn't no, he do he doesn't he do that? Yes, he does. He does that. I know. Yeah, I can totally yeah. see him do it, and he did. But anywho, um, Starlight Trixie talks about their backstory and Pharynx is impressed until Starlight and Trixie talks about the Reformation. And from that point on, Pharynx thinks they're wuss and wants nothing to do with them. And again, the the great way that Starlight just phrases it, Trixie's fine with being number two. (laughs) And Trixie just like, just scowls at her. (laughs) Actually, oh, if oh, we're being on. honest, Trixie's not even in the top ten. Oh, yeah. But anywho, Torex comes after putting lures to put a threat away, which is the um, mole bear something. What were they called? Uh, yeah, I think it's the... Mal wolf. Well, no, it's a more refined. I think they Let's call it a mal wolf. Mal wolf. M-A-U-L-W-U-R-F. But anywho, I'll continue on while Silver tries to find the name. Uh, the... Malwolf. Yeah, it's kind of... <laughs> that's a hard one to pronounce. Mm-hmm. It shows the hard words this episode. Uh, what? What's the name of the thing again? Malwolf. Malwolf. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. You know, it... uh, huh? My Little Pony's done a good job of looking up mythical creatures across the world. Let's but... see... Oh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Silver. Silva, I, I need to point something out. Uh, the word Marwolf is German for mole. Indeed. I'm looking I'm looking up and I'm getting a German Wikipedia page. 
Yes. And I do not speak German, so I would just be highly, highly, highly offensive. So, yeah, it's a more <laughs> less creative. So, what do they call it in Germany then? In the show? A Molworth. A Molworth. Oh, no, my. but I, that's what I mean. Is that the Molworth, what is it called in Germany then? They, will they just call it a big mole? Yeah. This I is kind so. of like one of those examples where, ah, they're opening the door to a disastrous translation. <laughs> well, 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 James, it, we're quoting a German word. So the word does not change in German. It's no, just Oh, oh, you mean the character in My Little Pony. Mm -hmm. No, I mean when they when they dub it into a different language, remember that in yeah. Russia I think the Wonderballs are called the Wonder Screws. <laughs> Wonder Screws. Oh I god. Not, I did not know that, but I'm gonna have a delightful time making fun of that. <laughs> oh yeah. So imagine when they change things. Um they they change a couple of things when they dub it into Spanish as well, which are rather disastrous. <laughs> Wait, um, I, I have a suggestion for our friends in Germany. They should call them all worth Sapphire Heart Song. Yes. No! I hate you! So, wait a minute. Is this what I was uh, brought up to my attention the other weekend that we call Sapphire Exploitation? No, not yet. That's something for the Patreons. Oh, boys. But anywho, I'll continue on. <laughs> it is Sapphire Exploitation, all right? Yes. I'll I am not all right. Thank you for your little... I'll continue on and try to save Sappy. Uh, Torex brings the ponies Ooh. to the feelings forum. And in the feelings forum... Oh, this grand scene. <laughs> and, this fantastic moment. Uh, and in the feelings forum, everybody shares their emotions and feelings. And... Girl emotions. Emotions <laughs> suck. <laughs> and hope that everybody can get along. And... Oh, Sappy's going through her goth phase. <laughs> yeah. And in said forum, uh, uh, one changeling is talking about, I, I feel like a purple changeling, but I'm green. So if I change my color, I don't feel right and so on, blah, blah, blah. It's superfluous. But they bring up pharynx, like you know who. And when they keep mentioning that, everybody gets a little bit rowdy and wants the you know who out. And... Pharynx comes in and says that this forum is stupid. Like, you are stupid. Like, you and your emotions. I'm out of here. Why was he there in the first place? I got no idea. And you guys had something to say about this? Oh, very much. You could use this, I think, to set talk to kids about, well, sort of a change going on, at least in American culture. We're sort of de-emphasizing the rowdy and violent aspect. And a lot of men, I'm going to just say the men, uh, they really resist this change. They keep, I see people scream out, here, man caps, where you get to learn to be a man because guys don't get in touch with their emotions. Guys don't express themselves. You're supposed to be aggressive and hostile and always on patrol. And, but there is a, some validity to the criticism that people are getting a little too sensitive, a little too uh, eager to talk about their feelings, uneager to take direct action. Every changeling in this forum is willing to uh, gripe about uh, Pharynx's bad attitude, but none of them are willing to take action. At the same time, Pharynx represents an old way of thinking of pure aggression and, you know, might makes right. right. He idealizes the world where he was uh, top dog, so to speak, but he doesn't want to acknowledge all the harm he was doing. You know, he said throughout this uh, episode, I would have drained them of love already. Yeah, and you never stop to think that might have been a bad thing. Well, it was good for me. Yeah, but you're not the world. Shut your face. <laughs> Plus, Pharynx, with all his hostility, you kind of know trying to talk to him is just a, a lost cause. He's going to get mad. You'll, there'll be an argument. You'll go away feeling miserable. I understand why people wouldn't want to commit to that course of action because it's a no-win. So I love seeing the, the dynamic of the best and worst of becoming a more sensitive culture Versus the best and worst of a more aggressive culture and trying to find that that compromise, that uh, sweet median between the two extremes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm glad that guy's super cooled off. Yay. <laughs> but anywho, James, you said you had something to say about this one too? Yeah. Uh, I mean, aside from agreeing with everything that Silver has said about this one scene in particular, uh, I, like the, I like the tone of it. Um, it's... Time really well. This is one of the few... Because th this show is heavy on the dialogue. 
they love to write dialogue in it. And sometimes th there is a bit of lacking of, you know, showing without telling, uh, not enough visual storytelling. This this show is not particularly uh, well known for that. But I like that this part, this scene, it has a lot of dialogue, but it's written very well. It's performed wonderfully and I love the the main chain the the head of the feelings forum that he be changeling mm -hmm. I love how he's all happy sunshine and you have to get in control of your inner rage and you have to let the peace flow into you until he loses his patience and he's like that's it forum cancel <laughs> which is it's that it's was stupid it was no, it wasn't stupid. It was funny. It was adorable. It was he, it was cute, and it showed that everybody has a breaking point, and that there is. It doesn't matter how much of a patient guy you are. Sooner or later, somebody's gonna make you angry. And somebody's gonna piss you off. So you're gonna have to do something about it. So or I'm cancel. In this show's case, that someone is myself and James. Fuck <laughs> you to Zeffy. Really? Oh yeah. wow! Podcast uh, cancelled. I'm glad I'm not in this but, one. Yeah, I mean. I I I am not as eloquent as as Silver on on saying what I like of this scene in particular, but uh, yeah, I do agree with with what he said before regarding how we have come to a point where we are either way too sensitive about things or way too blunt about things, and there is a middle point in there that we all can agree on. And I, I, I had it... somebody get mad at me over the fact that I named a Pokemon triggered. What Pokemon was it? It was a manky. <laughs> they hilarious. got mad at me because I named it Triggered, <laughs> even though it's completely true. But it's Maybe. completely true. If you watch the show, you know that mankeys can be, be easily triggered. <laughs> Maybe exactly. Should... Maybe you should have used it on a pony tr ponyta. You know, it's a <laughs> hi ho trigger. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, with me with this scene, I do like the changing expressing their feelings about pharynx um, and all of the points that been brought up is legitimate and thorax here as the leader here has to do something about it but i don't know it's one of those scenarios where thorax is trying to protect pharynx and trying to help him but pharynx here is not willing to change and pharynx here brings up a whole another point to the ch new changelings they're defenseless they're really open for attack and the mole wolf or the mole here is kind of proof that they're not ready like they still need to be aggressive they need to have a perfect balance of um, kind and aggression and too much kindness like this is not good um, we will see them change near the end, I think. But as for now, let's head away from the forum. Unless Seppi wants to put her share into it. Nah, I'm good. Alrighty then. So, anywho, Starlight and Trixie are working and discussing about Pharynx. And the both of them came to an agreement about the whole scenario where, yeah, Pharynx needs to leave because if not, the changeling might kick Thorax out of leadership and put in a new guy. So we're doing this for the betterment of Thorax. And while they go... Oh, to... the greats are good. <laughs> yes, the greats are, great are good. So anywho, while they go and meet up with Thorax, um, listening as a rock is Pharynx, and he decides to do something drastic. And while meeting up with Thorax, Thorax decides to, uh, to tell them about his backstory with Pharynx. Like, while in their little, a lot of changeling likes to be really aggro, while he, Thorax, likes to play with his dolls. And while almost getting bullied, Pharynx will come and scare the ever-living crap out of the other changelings by becoming a really huge creature. And Pharynx here... It looks like a Tyranid from Halo. Or was it Halo? No, what am I on? Starcraft. Starcraft. Yeah, looks like it. But anyway... Um, Pharynx comes over to Thorax and says, Why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? Pharynx here tells Thorax to toughen up because, well, you're a wuss. 
And yeah, now the... Does he actually say wuss? Nah, I'm just paraphrasing here to make things much more faster and easier. And after the flashback, Starlight and Trixie here decides not to tell Torex about their plan and decides to go with plan B, which is a terrible plan. A really, really terrible plan. And said plan is to lure the mole to the changeling hive and hoping that Pharynx is there to quote-unquote defend the changeling hive to show that how amazing he is at protecting them and accepting them to the hive. Yay. Yay. Well, it is kind of funny. You know, from the minute they mention the mall worm, you're like, oh, it's going to play a role in this show. Mm -hmm. Unless we have a return of the star spiders here. But if it were the main six, the mall worm would just get there on its own. (laughs) Here, though, Starlight's terrible plan actually encourages his wrath. And I find that delightful <laughs> as, it, as it shows how underqualified these two are to handle a friendship problem just yet. Yeah. And the funny part here is that the bait that was set is to lure the mole away from the hive. But Starlight here did the opposite and brought it to the hive. So she technically endangered the whole hive. Wait, he... He? Sorry, she. I bet. But anywho, once uh, the plan is set, Trixie s- explains to Starlight that, hey, um, you know, Pharynx left the hive and you just doomed the new changeling. Good job, Starlight. Good job. Uh, and then Starlight goes to Torex and explains the whole ordeal. And Torex here is visibly mad. Yes. <laughs> Uh, and demands what do you want him to do? <laughs> of course he's mad. He is. And demands that Starlight and Trixie come and help. But before that, Starlight here does a very wonderful speech to inspire the new changeling. And did it work? Nope. Hell no. <laughs> uh, yes. So, Torex and the girls went searching for Torex. Lucky for them, they found him fighting the mole. And wow, the mole is strong. Even the combined power of those four ponies, they couldn't even scratch it. Until the entire changeling hive appeared and defeated the mole wolf. It was a delayed response motivational speech. Yes. Yeah. Can I just say, uh, with the whole thing and all that, it's... It's kind of weird how this show likes the underground beast creature monster concept. At some point, I'm expecting to see a graboid from Tremors appear in one of these episodes. You mean the tassel worm? I mean, oh, the, the, was the tassel worm a reference to Tremors or a reference to Dune? I think it could be both. Well, there's a, there's the tassel worm, which is a real thing. Well, oh. no, it is a thing in world mythology. Okay. Uh, then there's the quarry eels. Mm-hmm. Now there's the ba- mall worm. Basically, I think that what, what they really like is that they can draw the creature coming out of the uh, underground, and therefore you don't have to draw the whole creature. Huzzah! <laughs> Yay! Uh, but anywho, let's speed things up with... After the mole has been defeated, Torex goes to Ferex and says that, Hey bro, I understand that you're not into the hive... And Ferenc says, you crazy? I love the hive. The hive is everything. And the other changeling says that, you know, we're wrong and we couldn't defend ourselves without you. And hearing that, Ferenc evolves. Your Ferenc is evolving. Do you want to press B to cancel it? No. No. Uh, yes. The fact that you even know what the hell you're talking about surprises me. <laughs> wow. Wow, the salt. The salt. <laughs> What can I? What can I say? I at least knew as much from the original 150 Pokemon. Mm-hmm. But you kids today with your 728 or whatever I it is. 800. Oh god! Get off my lawn! <laughs> uh, <laughs> but any no. But anywho, after Pharynx uh, Digivolution, Torex here says, "Hey, welcome to the hive." And well, episode ends, quote unquote. So with that. <laughs> Uh, let's hit into final thoughts. Silver, what about you, man? Well, I thoroughly expect Thorax to say, hey, my pincers are bigger. <laughs> uh, yes. 
But I, I really enjoy this. I love that now we have the changelings mirroring the dual leadership setup of, of, of Celestia and Luna. Uh, and in a weird way, uh, Pharynx and Thorax do complement each other. One gentle and kind-hearted, the other more aggressive and firm, but both and of them... Not a pansy. Not... Well, oh, this is also good development for Thorax, especially when he got mad at Starlight. It's like, well, of course you're coming. This is your fault. <laughs> it's like Ember's <laughs> like... Nice. Yeah. Ember's like that's my backbone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so it's nice to see uh, Thorax is is evolving into the leadership role, just as Pharynx is evolving. And yes, I do get the Pokemans. <laughs> Norman, Digivolution. You're bringing in another <laughs> franchise, really? Why not? <laughs> and I love how underqualified Trixie and Starlight are to handle this, although. I think my favorite part right now is is Trixie's combat tactics. <laughs> I threw a rock at him. <laughs> it was a big rock. <laughs> oh, yes. And of oh, course, gold. Just just like Safi's uh, shipping. <laughs> Never gonna get old. So, so this is one of my favorite episodes of the season. I'm so glad to witness it. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! Top five, you you say? <laughs> I th yeah, I think it's up there. I haven't mapped out like a precise top five, but it's definitely up there. Nice. All right. And what about you, Seppi? I hate this episode now because of a certain <laughs> bird tone. <laughs> Re. <laughs> but before that was decided at last minute. But before his influence, what do you think? Re. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we broke the Safi. Well done, guys. We she needs to, she needs to rewind. Re. But anywho, if Seppi doesn't have anything more to say, uh, James, what what about you? It's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's an episode that I can sit down, watch, and enjoy. Season seven has been full of those. Very weak start, but holy cow! Just keep checking them out. Good episode. Damn it! Ugh! Gonna watch it again. And as for me, I love this episode. This episode was a lot of fun. I uh, we get to see Torex being more um, aggressive and more leaderish, and we get to see the changing in their natural habitat, and we also get to see the dynamic of Trixie and Starlight. Those two are fun. No wonder DWK loves to play with them. In more ways than. Uh huh. So yeah, this episode was a lot of fun to watch. And yeah, I can't wait to see Ferenc's new role in the new Changeling Hive or Kingdom. I hope that he becomes Captain of the Guards or something like that because their defense is worthless. But anywho, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Well, I think we need to step away from ponies, if only to give poor Safi's mind a break. Mm. Free. <laughs> so we're going to take a look back, a rewind, if you will. <laughs> At some at the movies of 2017, what did we enjoy? What did we not really enjoy? And what can we take from this? Yay. So please join us for a look back at 2017's cinematic year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like due to rewind, but good. <laughs> oh wow! So anywho, that will be next week's project. So anyway, if you guys at home would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com and coffee.com. With your support, you'll get early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusives, and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. And talking about thank you, I would like to thank Lurka Cat, Nandrikatoria, Starstream, Master of Lag, Amy, Mark, and also Charles. Thank you guys for the awesome support. You have been great. So anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been the Silver Quill, and I promote many ships to drive people crazy. Free. And I have been confused the entire time. Who am I? What am I doing here? I like pudding. Uh, and I guess we'll guys see you next week with another fun show of the yes reviews. See ya. Adios. Merry Remus. Help from this train wreck. We have no idea where we are. I'm going to bed now. <laughs> <laughs>